Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McBain, along with me, Steve Arsling, both pastors here at Eagleville Bible Church. And there's, okay, there was an article, so I was wondering what to do. You know, I'm like, well, what will I do the show on today? I'm going to look at the news. <laughs> so then I see this article about this. Tim Boyd, he's the mayor of Colorado City in Texas, and he says this. And some of it I agree with. So he ended up resigning. But there's a lot of people stepping down from stuff in a cancel culture yep. that it's not that I, I'm wondering, what did they say that was really wrong? Like, what was so outrageous about that? You know, because I'm, I'm kind of like finding myself agreeing with it, realizing they'd probably cancel me, Steve. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. But I don't agree with everything. Yeah, maybe this after guy. this podcast. They might. They might. <laughs> YouTube you might never know. It. There's still time. <laughs> yeah, no, YouTube, YouTube might throw yeah, it our salt the platform. Right off. We'll have to go find out where Parlor went and just go there. But uh, it says, let me hurt some feelings uh, while I have a minute. No one owes you. Now, this is this is a town of 4,000. 25% of the people are without power. So this is mm. what the whole thing is about. Down in Texas, they got, if you haven't seen the news, they got froze out pretty <laughs> good down there. I mean, it's, it's pretty epic how cold it is. But he goes, no one owes you or your family anything, nor is it the local government's responsibility to support you during trying times like this. Sink or swim, it's your choice. The city and the county, along with power providers or any other services, owes you Nothing. Now, I don't agree with that, obviously. They owe them power. Yeah. Now, if they're saying, hey, you got to come build us a fire in the fireplace, then I would say, yeah, you're right. You don't owe them that. But he also complained that residents were looking for a handout, told them to accept personal responsibility for being left in the cold. If you're sitting home in the cold because you have no power and are waiting for someone to come rescue you because you're lazy, <laughs> that's a direct result of your raising. Bottom line, quit crying and looking for a handout. Get off your bleep and take care of your own family. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I, I look at this, no one owes you anything. So what do you think about that statement in general? I mean, not just here, but in general, in general, timing is everything. I think timing was probably wasn't good as people are caught up in their suffering and right. misery. <laughs> However, yeah, I mean, I think what part of the reason we're talking today is it def, definitely gives you some of these thoughts and these ideas and it gives you pause to, yeah, well, I, I ought to think about the situation I'm in. Right. right? Well, hey, I when mean, I was without power, you don't know when it's going to come on. Here? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm sitting there whining, complaining about it. I build a fire in a fireplace. You figure it out because yeah. you just do what you have to do to get through it. So I do understand when you say as, as a basic concept, I feel this way. No one owes me anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not owing anything. My friends don't owe me anything. If I help somebody, they don't owe me anything. Because you all hear people say that from time to time. Yeah. Oh, hey, I owe you for this. And I think, no, you don't owe me anything. Yeah. I don't I don't look at life that way. I don't go through life looking for handouts. So, I mean, I agree with that. But when it comes to the government's responsibility, utility, like phone service or electricity for heat. Yes. I mean, that is something that a normal individual, you can't tell an individual, hey, you're without power you go down and fix the wire that came off the pole. No, you got, because we can't do that. If, if a pipeline breaks and freezes in the main street of the city, obviously the individual can't go and just fix it themselves. I mean, that's something you are, there are some things we are relying upon the government and it is the government's responsibility to do it, right? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, we pay taxes. We expect certain amounts of infrastructure, things like that. I, I think, yeah, we, we pay for a service. Well, we expect it, you know? I mean, I expect the cell phones to be on. I do expect the lights to be on. I do right. expect the internet to be up. And if I'm paying for a service, I mean, certainly. But I think about, you know, situations like this where people just immediately leap to such emotional responses and demands yeah. and everything else. You're like, well, here's an event that happens in Texas. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier, you know, our homes up here in, in Ohio, Northeast Ohio aren't built or insulated like they are in Alaska, nor are they built and insulated like they are in Florida. You know, so Texas isn't expecting a, you know, a winter tundra. <laughs> right. And so your infrastructure may not be built to sustain certain things. I'm, I'm just saying, it's like, but immediately, everybody in this world is immediately looking for someone to go point the finger at, to blame for all their ills in life, to just demand something. Right. And, and I think about, especially in this COVID world, you know, well, at the same time that we're screaming and hollering, get my services back. Well, we're expecting these people to leave the safety of their homes and right. expose themselves in a COVID world. See, right. even our selfish self-centeredness makes people go because I want my services. And so right. you better work. Right. You better do this. You better provide. You better give me, 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 me as I sit home. Right. 
And, you know, expect, expect, but it's expect. bringing up a problem, Steve. And they, now those are things I, I would agree they, and they should be out and they would be out. And I think that, you know, we realize how ridiculous it is to expect that they're going to cower and hide from COVID. So why would we, or well, why no, I'm saying my whole point right. is I think about the selfishness of people and our emotional responses. Well, we don't even think, well, all these guys are out there working 24 seven. They're out there in all the elements. They're out there in the freezing cold, trying to restore your services right. They're They're doing it. And, and I think about because, and they're doing it in a COVID environment, which, you know, everybody says, Oh my gosh, we got to protect everybody. Well, you don't care about the utility workers life. Right. Uh, you know, that's, I think like, I think well, along those lines, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, wait well, a minute. No, wait, but don't we care about the utility workers lives? They're out right. there working on these polls they're out there subjecting themselves to covid risks for us right, right. oh no we can't do that right you know i mean it's, it's no of course it's no but they're saying is no none of that give me my power right but i think we go give too far now, you i think me. we go too far sometimes because i think your electricity on yeah i mean i'd like to have electricity yeah, i think it's i important. do i i like to if you're paying for phone service have phone service or if you're paying a service for you know your furnace goes out and you have a contract for them to come look at it yeah you would expect them to come look at it. i mean that that's just what you're paying for mm -hmm. so it's not really like a handout and i think some of the citizens down there in colorado city were saying hey mayor it's not really a handout. Like having water, city water, <laughs> not really a handout. We no, pay for that. Having electricity is not a handout. We're paying for that. We're not expecting it for free, I agree. which I agree with that. But on the other hand, you know, I've had people. But I think it's beyond that. I've seen, I've seen other celebrities chiming in. I don't want to mention because I don't want to make it political, but somebody else chiming in and says, well, this is the problem. Here's people, if they would do X, Y, Z. Now they need to do this. They need to get on board with, with whatever this ideology. Right. And it's like, you know, right away they're jumping on a calamity and it's like, you know what, just just solve the problem right now. Oh. Help people as best you can and go forward. Steve, I mean, this is something, my goodness, it's so ridiculous. We politicize oh, everything yeah. anyway. But there I remember a, a young lady complaining that the government wasn't going to pay for birth control mm -hmm. at one point. And I started thinking, well, is it the government's responsibility to pay for my toothpaste? Is it like how far are you gonna go? Is the government's responsibility? Because if I'm going to start relying on the government for everything, granted, utilities, roads, bridges, we don't build that kind of stuff. The infrastructure stuff, that's government. Telephone poles is kind of private sector too, but it's a utility. All that kind of stuff, yeah, I don't have anything to do with. But there's other things that I do. I can't expect the government to do it. I'm not sitting there expecting the government when it came time to help my kids to college. I wasn't expecting the government to come and decide for me what I need to eat and what my diet should be. And I'm not mm -hmm. expecting them, like I said, to buy my toothpaste. It's not, it's not their job. No, I and, and if we get to the point that we're going to rely on the government for education, we're going to rely on the government for medicine, we're going to rely on the government for every sector, every facet of our lives, I think that we're going to really be asking for, a, we're going to be taking our responsibility in some ways and handing it over to the government, which is going to create a monstrous bureaucracy in which there will be corruption, oh, yeah. which will be mind-blowing. And there's going to be inefficiency because it's going to be this big, huge monster that we've created because we're not really taking personal responsibility. Yeah, I agree. I think personal responsibility is a big thing. I think people have to take a look at that. You have to weigh, you know, what is the investment worth it? I mean, Jesus Christ, even talk about discipleship. If you're going to, if you're going to come and follow me, you know, I think about, I'm thinking about Luke chapter 14, you know, so you better count the cost of this building. Right. You better count the cost of going to war. You better be thinking about what it takes. And I think there is personal responsibility. I think about you, you mentioned student loans um well I mean, it'd be great if, my, if, if if some people would benefit from paying out student loans but the reality is you know you should have maybe we're not we can't cover poor choices if you went and got a degree in gender studies say and you were right. never gonna and you spent a hundred thousand dollars and you're never gonna get a job that pays more than fifteen thousand a year right that was a poor choice. Why right. should somebody bail you out of a student loan? I, you know, be, everybody goes buys a car. Let's bail out their loans. I mean, it's, it's one of those things I think is kind of crazy. It, it, it's a, it isn't going to help the poor, by the way, because the poor are getting to school for free. It, it, you were talking about people who made poor choices. Right. And I don't think it's, it should be up there for the rest well, of the people. Well, I think, go, too. And, and, and I, go ahead. Not, not even, you know, let's forget about poor choices for a moment. You can't afford to spend money you don't have and if the government does not have money to bail out people in their student loan debts we shouldn't be doing it if we don't have money like, like sending all the money out everyone's excited well i got 600 bucks now i'm gonna get 1400 bucks well great when inflation goes up and your dollar's not worth as much guess what that's going to be meaningless because you're going to spend all that and higher food costs, higher cereal costs, higher gas costs, higher everything costs, because it's always going to come back to you. 
And then uh-huh. it's really disproportionate because I can actually, Steve, and you can too, we can absorb a $3 a gallon gas fee. Even if it gets up $3.50, we can absorb it. But I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be really hard oh, yeah, the on, other, on the poor people. Oh, it's going to be hard really, right. because all your disposable income goes away, a portion of it. If you just got to put more, if you're using the same amount of gas, you always do, but I got to pay more for it. Your disposable income goes down. So right. it affects everybody. I think about the medical thing. I, I, I was shocked when I first left my secular job I had uh, full benefits, great, and not the church has been gracious in providing what I have here, but I went from like the Cadillac version down right. a bit. Right. And, and so when, one of the things that went with that was I was getting this prescription filled and I had it filled through my program at the other plant, didn't even think about it. And I went and paid my $20 or whatever. And I had to come down here and I, I was going to get it refilled. And I found out that this prescription actually was going to cost me like $150. And I'm like, what? Right. And I, and I, and I questioned, and a pharmacist says, well, your doctor prescribed this oddball dosage. If he would only prescribe this, I can get it for you for 15 bucks. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I called the doctor and I said, Hey man, and he and he he feigned ignorance about it, and I'm like, okay, and it could have been. He may not right. have known. So he goes, no problem. I'll, I'll prescribe this this dosage. Right. So he did. It cost me 15 bucks. And I thought about that back because you think about the bureaucracy and how open competitions and all the things that government controls that won't allow these things to be known. And before I'm fat, dumb, and happy, and all this extra money is being spent that didn't need to be. Right. But once I had to be made aware, and it was going to affect me, my own pocket. Right. Now, I took a much more vested interest right. into what type of dosage I was right. going to be getting. If your, company, if your company was paying for the medical insurance, and, yeah, you're yeah, not going to worry about and, it. Right. You know, if people, I think about, because I think I come back to that responsibility, making good choices, evaluating. I'm not going to spend 150 when I can spend 15 by changing the dosage. Yeah. 10 I mean, it, times. It, it's not even, a, it, it's a no right. brainer, right? Right, right? And I think about that as even like going to school. Whatever you're going to invest in your future, you know, we, we, we pay property taxes, schools are open, like you're saying, until you're 18 years old, you can get a college high school education, you go on from training from there. And I highly recommend it, whether it's going to be military, as I did a lot of hiring and firing, and you better have some military training, you better have some technical training, you better have a college education. But you know, you got to make good decisions. What's the best way for you to get that? Right. And and if you can't afford it, you're going to take on huge debt, you're never going to be able to repay. Don't make that stupid decision. Right. No, I would I would agree 100% because, again, but that's when you're looking at it as your responsibility and it's not it's for someone your else. And, and right? my, my concern is the more that we rely on the government, the more influential, the more of a nanny state that we're going to create and we're going to start accepting, it's really getting close to socialism already. And so you're going to push now these boundaries and you're going to say, oh, it's okay. Yeah, I want to take this, you know, 2000 bucks, whatever the government's giving us, forgetting the fact somebody's going to have to pay for that someday. Oh, yeah. We're going to create inflation. We're going to create other problems, which is going to eat up all that money. Yeah. It's not the deal that we think it is. And that's no. one thing that we got to wake up to and start paying attention to. So it is your responsibility. I do look at it. No one owes me anything. Okay, I don't I don't feel like I'm owed anything. Yeah, the services I pay for, sure. But other than that, I don't expect the government to come shovel my sidewalk. No. I don't expect them to take care of my driveway. I don't expect them to paint the room upstairs that my wife and I just paint it. What happens in my house, what goes on the wall, I mean, that's really up to me. So we need to get into a society where you need to stop looking for handouts and earn your way. And he said, bottom line, quit crying and looking for a handout. Get off your tail end. Take care of your family. Now, I, I look at this and say, yeah, stop whining. If you're having problems in your life, if you have a shortfall in your life, stop whining about it. Get out there, do something about it, figure it out, right? right. Well, I stop agree whining. With that. I agree with that. Stop whining. But then he goes on that you need to get out there and take care of your own family. There, I, I get why people were upset with that because some people are elderly. They can't just get out right, the door. Right, they right. need electricity. Some people are disabled. They can't get out. You know, it was, it was insensitive. Like you said, it was bad timing. It's insensitive. And so the certain things, aspects that I think were like not in accord with reality. However, I do agree with, uh, this is what our country needs to hear. Quit crying and looking for a handout. Get going and take care of your own family. It is our responsibility, it's my responsibility as a man to take care of my wife. It's my responsibility when I have kids to take care of my own kids. It's my responsibility to come up with my own sermons on Sunday morning and not to expect anyone else to do my work. 
my, my job is to do my work, right? No, I agree. And I, I think it is one of those ones. I mean, you know, we as a society, we take care of some of these things are, these, are set up that we can take care of the powerless. I mean, even as Christians, we're commanded to take care of the powerless, you sure. know, to take care of the widows and the orphans right. and, and those who are powerless. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're an able-bodied person and you're, and there's nothing wrong with you, Right. And there's no reason you can't work. Maybe you don't want to dig a ditch. You'd rather be sitting in an office. Well, that's a little, that's, that's great. But if you can't get to the office, maybe you need to dig the ditch. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, it's like, well, you know, well, you, if you're able-bodied, God has given you all abilities to work and earn your way anyway. And I think that's kind of interesting. And, and, and God has gifted people, right. given us the ability to go out and earn income. And so are we doing that? Right. You know, I think about if you want something, you know, number one, I think about Ecclesiastes, you know, be content with your lot in life. Right. You know, don't live beyond your means. You know, if you're not going to be a millionaire, that's okay. Right. You don't need to be a millionaire. If you, you know, be happy with what you got, right. God's telling you, and he's given it to you, be content with it, but live within your means. If you start living beyond your means, well, either go work for it right, or do something. You got to go do some buying. You got to do something. And that's what it says right here, Steve. I mean, 2 Thessalonians 3, starting with 7, this is Paul talking about his example. He goes, follow my example. We were not idle. We did not eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. Mm -hmm. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Now, if we live in a world where I heard this story a while back. There was somebody with, I would say it was a, it was a nursing degree. So, I mean, that's, I don't know if that's a bachelor's degree or equivalent or not. I'm not sure, but yeah, well, yeah, she I was, a, you so. know, had a nursing degree. At some point, yeah. Yeah. See, depending could, on what the, 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 the letters money. at the end of the thing. Right. Could right, make good it. money. Yeah, right? yeah, it should be able to. Found that it was easier to collect. They made more relying on the government and allowing the government to pay all their bills than they did to work. They could have worked. They chose not to work so that the government would pay everything and then they got to stay home. Yeah. I look at that kind of thing and say, okay, well, even if you could get away with that, should you get away with that? Even yeah. if you could take advantage of, of a situation or a system, should you? And I'm not saying if the government wants to give assistance or something or you know, you're on hard times and the government gives a grant for college. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm saying, why in the world would I have the government pay my bills when I can get out work, pay my own bills? Why would I do that to myself? I mean, well, I'd see, yeah. I live in a day, seriously, you did everything that you could as a human being, not to have to rely on the government. I mean, that's the way you grew up. I mean, you did everything possible. You did everything that you could to make it on your own. So you did not have to get assistance. Then if like my dad, when he ran into hard times and he did a couple of times and it all amounted to maybe that he needed 400 bucks or 500 bucks, not the end of the world. But they would help, the church would help him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like going to the government, it was a church. And then when his business failed because they put, um, they tore up the sewer lines right by his gas station. Well, they shut him down for almost a year and he went out of mm -hmm. business. My dad paid back every creditor he had because that's the way he was. You know what I'm saying? He was not going to leave anyone in the lurch because he was honorable and he was upright and he was going to do the right thing. And I think that's the kind of citizen that we need to be. We need to be this kind of guy like Paul. Hey, I didn't take anything, I didn't expect anything, I worked for everything that I had. Right, I worked for everything I had, and I did this to be an example to you. And the world needs examples of good hard workers. And if you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah, I think it, it, that's a problem because if you count on a government, you create this bureaucracy where the federal government or even a state government they they do not produce revenue. They do not produce a product and make revenue. Right. The, any revenue they have coming in comes from individuals like you and I. Right. Any money the government spends. They're spending other people's money. Right. And so, you know, that's the thing. To give other people's money, that means somebody's got to give probably more. Right. And that person who's going to give more is you and I. Right. And ultimately, in one well, way, shape, or form. We always say tax the rich, but all they do is then they own well, the businesses that sell you the goods, and they just up the charge of the goods. Yeah. You know, I now, mean, listen, it, the middle it, class yeah. is always going to pay for it. Absolutely. So, I mean, ultimately, is the reality is, and like we talked about, like these uh, other handouts and things that are coming through, you know, we were kidding around. You and I are getting a little bit older. I'm going to be 55 this year, and, uh, you know, I probably won't have to worry about paying for it. But my sons, I think, and I told them, like, well, good luck to you. Right. <laughs> you know, you're going to be well, – 
you only get to, when you only get to keep thirty five percent of everything yeah, you make because sixty five percent of your money goes to the government. To you. Yeah, and where is your tax rates going to go? Right. Where is that? Where are those brackets going to go? Because guess what? Somebody all this money they're doling out. It doesn't come out of the air. It comes out of people's pockets. They're the citizens right. of this country. And so, you know, that's, guess what? It's more coming out of somebody's pocket. I think that, I think as a country, I think one of the admonitions I would have is like, you got to work hard. You got to be responsible and have that attitude. No, absolutely. I, I, I earn my own way. No one owes me anything. I'm going to get out. I'm not looking for your handout. Uh, I'm looking to get out there and figure stuff out on my own because without that, I really believe that our nation is softening and we're losing some of that independent spirit that we used to have. I mean, this used to be a very individualistic nation, very much, hey, we can make uh-huh. it. And you're, you've got that streak in you that, hey, no matter what, right, Absolutely. I'm going to be okay and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to figure it out. And now you see it more and more is becoming easier for us to say, yeah, you know, there was a pandemic government. Here's our handout. Yeah. Here's our handout. Every time you put your hand out, you empower them. And I just want people to think about that. We are empowering the government to have more and more control over our lives. Is that really what we want? And I think seeing through the pandemic and some of the dumb rules that we've had to go through, not saying they're all dumb rules, but some of the rules are pretty stupid. And we have to endure that. Like, and when I'm saying stupid rules, okay, what is a stupid rule? Okay. I'll, I'll give you this one. Your, your, your loved one's dying. You can't go to see them, but as soon as they're dead, you can go in now. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay. That doesn't even make sense. It's like, what do you mean? You can walk down the hallways, the same hallways, go into the same room. You couldn't do it while they're alive, but you can do it when they're dead. And it just, it doesn't even make sense. No. And I've seen thing after thing of this. It does. It doesn't make sense for team captains to come and stand whatever 12 feet apart from each other, flipping a coin right. in the NFL, when you're going to go be slugging each other out in the field for whatever, you know, no, in I, the next 60 yeah, minutes. And, and I, I agree. That's why we got to be careful what we forfeit over to a bureaucracy and, and, and making choices for us because it could be pretty dangerous. And I'm all for, again, I mean, we, and we are. When we have mercy ministry, we are all for for helping those who Absolutely. are in need. There ain't even a question about that. We'll right. take care of the powerless. We will take a look after those things. I am all about that. Right. But if you are able-bodied, you better make some good choice to get moving. I think that's a good clarification. Absolutely. Yes. But we have gotten to the point, Steve, I think we're even speaking out. If you're hurting someone's feelings, it's almost like the unforgivable sin. Yeah, I, I can't yeah. say anything that's going to hurt, think, hurt yeah, your I think, feelings. I think you better toughen up a little bit. Yeah, I right. Mean, so toughen up, cupcake, right? Yeah, yeah, right. I think you know sometimes the things that happen. Yeah, you better uh, you better get a little thicker skin than that because this world's right. going to chew you up. If you're going right. to get that emotional off everything, something gets said. I here don't or know. There. I, I think wow. the world's going to start off the ceiling. I, I was thinking about it, you know let's let's get everybody <laughs> off the ceiling. Let's right, come exactly. down off the ceiling a little bit and let's just take a couple breaths and let's let's well talk maybe for another show we'll 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 have to get into the topic again. But I think the people that are really getting chewed up are the people who make common sense statements like the gal that was playing was it in the new star trek thing uh the mandalorian i think it was and she was an actress in there and she said hey what's the difference between nazi germany she's not saying that (laughs) to to me (laughs) that i know she was saying look how they got people to feel about the jews and what did it lead to? She's not saying that people are getting beat up right now. I think the thinking was, what could our thinking right now lead to if we have a whole group of people that okay. we're treating as second-class citizens, which would be, in this case, conservatives, could it lead to what it led to? In Ger- oh, man, people had a fit. She had no. to quit the show. And I'm, no. I, I read the whole statement. And I'm like, I see what the girl's saying. I agree with her that you are indeed setting up a very negative and dangerous environment. I've preached on that already before she even got fired for that because I agree with that. You are definitely creating, and anyway, and even if you don't agree with it, why can't she say it and have an opinion? No, I agree. But who's the one getting chewed up? It's, it's the person who's whining. It's the person whose feelings are hurt. They're the ones that are getting on that person. And now that person says something that hurts somebody's feelings. So God forbid that can't happen. And I think that's where we've got to toughen up too. But anyway, that's our time. We're way over our time, actually. Yeah. We appreciate you tuning in and listening. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it's encouraging. Hopefully it's inspiring. Keep working. Get up there. Take care of your family. Always do the best that you can. You guys all have a great and awesome week.